I don't know, it was some weird like it was some weird like cute term of endearment, but like it was clearly an insult too. Uh, it was like trashling or something. It's like I'm my little sweet trashling. That's that's. I don't know how she hasn't divorced me. Yet. I don't either. It's crazy. Yeah. Maybe it's we're just like maybe we're watching Yellowstone. I was like, oh, right. just, I don't That's know fair. what it was. Like Beth just in, in sort of. How far have you gotten now? Still we're season one. Season two. We finished okay. season one, right. which is gr right. great. But anyway, if you like useless meanderings and blatherings from us, click like this. This is your play. <laughs> you found it. And the bell. No. Um, all that stuff. Just click it. We're talking about today, Guitar Heroes. <laughs> that you might not know are awesome guitar heroes out there. So I mean, some of these sort of guys that have maybe formed like great impressions on us yeah. that we think you should catch, you should maybe check out. And they have done some amazing guitar things, not in this sort of typical acrobatic way. No. Of like, what we're, you know, shredders. we're yes. leaving out the shredders. We're leaving out like the classics of like, you know, Clapton's and Hendrix's and Page's and Steve Ray Vaughan's and Gilmore's and all those guys. There's a guy that plays with some other small bands in England that we'll leave out as well. Those. But we're going to get into some of the sort of oddball ones that, you know, name one of yours. Well, you know, the first, when we talked about this, we were like saying non-shredders. This, this is a very well-known one, but the first thing that came to mind was The Edge. I always loved The Edge. What like band the does he play with? A little band called U2, which gets a lot of hate occasionally. Do they get yeah. hate? I feel like they do. Really? I feel like their misstep was when they like... Forced their song into everyone's device I in the whole world. I think I've forgotten that. That, no, was like, that was a moment. We will not forget. I, Always I, remember. Yeah, the, I mean, not the, new, the new stuff's not. <laughs> <laughs> we I will think. not forget. <laughs> I have I have tense problems on my uh, my speech. That could be that should be your slogan when you run for like like mayor or something in your town. We will not forget. <laughs> no one's voting for me. For John any, and Robinson any will office. not forgot. I have not forgot. Not forgot it. Um, not forgot it. <laughs> not forgot it. Um, yeah. No, no I, well, I think the edge is obviously awesome. The edge is awesome, but I mean, there, for me, there were a lot of cool guitar things that um, shaped how I thought about guitar parts. And what's funny is I don't even know a lot of the dudes' names. And if we researched things, I would have looked them up before this, but I did. <laughs> no, I mean, I did a little bit of research because I like to pre-plan. But I'm going to jump into one of two of my favorite guitar players, um, Dean and Sean from a little band called Luna. Okay. The little band that could. No, it's, it's one of my favorite bands. And the reason I mention them is like, I think I was like sort of falling out of love with rock and roll. Okay. And then I heard this album, Penthouse. I think the band formed in 1990 or something. I didn't hear this band until like 95, 96 maybe. Um, and it sort of reinvigorated like, you know, the, the cool factor of rock and roll to me. It was, it's definitely on the indie tip. Yep. But it's very like great songs. But the guitar playing was atmospheric. The solos were written to service the song again. Yeah. And, it, and it was just a, definitely, a, there's an interplay between the two, similar to like that Richard Lloyd, Tom Verlaine aspect. Okay. Of their, like they each sound so different when they play. And it was just, you know, and Sean would have like these great sounding effects. And I don't even play with effects, but his wash of reverb and delay to make the song just beautiful. Right. And it's just, I just love watching them. And I've seen them, I saw them live multiple times. I remember driving down to the Cotton Club when I was living in Nashville to see them because they weren't coming through Nashville that year for some reason. You know, it, it was great shows. And I always see them in New York when I lived up there. One of the guys that got, that I just, not a shredder, not like really a rock guy, but I loved that first Matchbox 20 album. We talked about this before. And so the guitar player's name is Kyle, and I cannot think of his last name. I can't help you because I do not like that record. You don't like that record. Well, just because I just didn't like that type of music when it came out. Yeah, no, I, I get know that. it's a good record. I, there was just so many, and they're not like solos, but there's just so many cool little guitar parts that, that I just would not have ever thought to play. And then I remember like listening to it for the first time in headphones, also as a really young person, and just thinking, wow. That's in there, and I didn't even know it. And it you know, it just it, I learned a lot from like layering and trying to play these little hooky things um, that then I totally forgot about later. <laughs> I have to play my old man blues. Well, I, but, I, I put them in with um, that, yeah. that third eye blind. Like the, their guitar work They're, is phenomenal as well. I saw them live one time, and you wouldn't know it in their songs, but like in the middle of that show, it was a show I remember taking my sister. It was her her birthday. I took some of her and her friends, and my friend James Croom and I. We all went up to see them at Walnut mm -hmm. Creek. And it was like Third Eye Blind and like Vertical Horizon and like Stroke Nine, <laughs> like all these, you know, this 90s. This right. is everything. Oh, I used to love them too. I, I was more like excited about either. seeing them than Third Eye Blind, oh. but Third Eye Blind was amazing. Yeah. And there's a point in the show where the guitar player just like climbs up on one of the speakers 
everybody else leaves and he just does this like Van Halen-y shred mm-hmm. thing for well, even uh, let alone that like he's just a great parts writer he's a great parts like, writer uh, you listen to, like the underplaying do, do, guitar do, parts do, 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 do. I can still hum all those things you know what I mean those are hooks in every one of those songs I mean it's like yeah we can get like I mean I can't even include Noel Gallagher because everyone knows who that is one right. of the great rhythm but sort of like lead writers too but the other two that I'm really into as well is Scott and Sean. I'm um, Scott and Sean. Sorry, I was thinking about Linda. Scott and Steve, but that's um Scott Canterberg and Steve Malcolmus from Pavement. Um, if you haven't listened to Pavement, like the guitar work in that is fascinating. One of their most famous records, I think it was Slain and Shannon, doesn't even have bass on it. There you go. But it sounds so. And I couldn't even figure out why this record sounds so different. I was like, then somebody told me, Larry, I think locally, I was like, oh, there's no bass in that because Larry is a drummer that plays with Scott. When he's on solo tour, who lives here? Strange small town we live in. Um, but their their guitar work again is just it's fascinating. It has I love that interplay of guitar work that is not the traditional like Skinnerd, like sort of Almond Brothers aspect. Like that's like you know, like godlike things. These they're they're taking sort of like off things and weird rhythmic patterns and. That's cool. I mean, there's something about that, like learning to play in a band with another guitar player who doesn't play like you. You know what I mean? And letting everybody have their spot and their place and where they live and stay in there. I mean, that's really valuable. Jack White's one of the... He's big, so it's yeah. sort of hard to... But yeah, he's one you should listen to just as far as sonic like you know, territory that you can step into that you've not thought about, maybe. You know, it's, um, you know we, we all got... Yeah, you, know, you you want to learn like the John Mayer licks, and you want to learn the Eric Clapton licks, and all the, the awesome bass licks. But then like, Jack will sort of like like licks be damned. Check out like <laughs> he'll do this thing. I saw him play the Star Spangled Banner the other day. Did you watch that for the Detroit game? No, I didn't do watch. He it. did it with the slide because you're getting ready to play it. That's true. God, yeah, I know. I need yeah, to be working on that's it why it's coming thinking, up in a few weeks. That's why I watched it. Cause yeah. Normally, I just scroll past because it's, it just had me. He's got his blue hair, so it's now he does a slide. A lot of it's like way out of tune. Like he's sort of like not missing notes, but it's pretty darn close. But it's it's just his like. His flair and his verve for the thing. I and, need to go watch that one. And his blue hair. And he's got his band playing with him a little bit. They're just going, like similar things. And, and like somebody's playing a little background guitar, I think, just to give it something. Because he's because he's playing like halfway. He's almost, he gets to the high part. And then he clicks on his like his like overdrive stuff where he gets all like piercy. <laughs> I was like, oh. You're, you're talking about like the wash of stuff, right? So like, you know, when I was first started playing, I was doing a lot of like uh, CCM like like the contemporary Christian stuff. I was like, when you said CCM, I was like, clear, cl- <laughs> clear water, ma- I don't I can, so. But there were guys like uh, um, uh, a band called Delirious, you know what I mean? That like the guitar stuff and that, which it wasn't all washy, it was pretty cool rock kind of stuff. But that, like I learned a lot from that. And then there's a guy named James Duke who played for a lot of those artists. Didn't they design the big sky around that? <laughs> they did, no. I, like, <laughs> I mean, they could have, yeah. That was later, that was later on the line. That's like, once they, they, the big sky like took over that, so they're trying to create those guys' sounds. And it was the, just all, the, and it was all kind of the edge, just moved forward. And then Coldplay, right? <laughs> so oh, I, mean, like Coldplay. I think Coldplay's <laughs> like, guitar works great. I mean, but like, or Jonesy and his team from Sigur Rós is That's like right. one, of, one of my, my favorites. Now, some guitar heroes that you might not know who you're listening to, like, let's talk about, like, this cat named Brian Bonds. We just got to hang out with our buddy Brian Bonds. We did hang out with that strange little fireball of a man. Listen, that we did a podcast with him, so you need Ooh. to go check it out. If you haven't listened to our podcast, it's on Spotify and Apple Music and all the all the things, iTunes. Not the porn star. The, no, um, the guitar player from, yes. they say FGL, which is really confusing to me. Oh, yeah. It's like, I'm like Florida Georgia Line. FGL. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> just it's getting like CCM. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not that into this. I don't know what these things are. Um, but no, but th- like he like added something to that band where like, I don't, th- you know, the sum of that band would not be, it just wouldn't be what it is without the weird because he doesn't look like a country guitar player. Well, no, yeah, he doesn't play like a country guitar player. He plays like a rock and roll guitar player that can play country like a badass, but play also, country, big jazz dude. Um, but he plays rock and roll. He does play, and rock he and roll. looks like rock and roll. And his PRS is maybe the coolest one I've ever seen. The Buck Owens PRS is what I like to call it. But um, yeah, it's so freaking cool. It's yeah, it's it's awesome. If you go listen to like watch live shows from them, I think he was with them from 2010, 2015. Yeah, um, five year run at least. You see him a lot, and he, we were talking about this that Mohawk. he because he had like a personality and you know was out there. He but, gets a lot of camera time, but which it, is and, cool. and it added something different than like the typical yeah sort of like what you expect 
from like you know your country solos. It's right. like, oh, this guy's gonna shred. And I, and I did ask him, him if he got to play on any of the records, and he said he, I think he did a lot yeah. of them. So, um, so pretty cool. So even when you're hearing that on the radio, you're hearing. Can I add one of my Brian. favorite guitar players? That's maybe not even a real guitar player, but yes. who was a huge influence to me, <laughs> Tito Jackson. From the Jackson Five, I know. I saw. I bet him, but that stuff, those, that, that some of that stuff is really tricky. No, exactly. That was the first CD I bought <clears> myself. <throat> I remember as a kid, and and like I, I, and I remember seeing like a video somewhere on VHS of like the Jackson Five performing. I want you back, and I was like watching the guitar player. He was playing like a three thirty five. He's like dancing. So when I lo- start, first started learning guitar, I learned to dance as I was playing. So I was like doing a little side step, behind the foot, little slides. Shoo. Can't slide on bench. It's really hard. I'm I trying. want to see that so bad right then, now. But yeah, it's just like I'll show you later. It's a little hop. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. This is why we need members only content. So like, if they paid, God. they could see you dancing on, on the members did. only thing. Can we wear members only jackets too? Yes. That's coming one day soon to a YouTube it. channel near you. Um, I got one more too that you'll hate. Go. I learned so much from the Countin' Crows. I, oh. I used to love the guitar stuff. I was hoping you were going to say like Hootie and the Blowfish because I used to make fun I, of them. Well, and then I went. I've listened to them as a grown up. Those guitar parts are really Mark, well. written. His name is Mark Bryan. That guy's really name is well Bryan. written. I, he, he's he's a great player, and it's just you know, yeah. There are little parts, the guitar things that he played that are they're part of those songs, right? They're it's you know, like even if I play them, there's a couple that I do acoustic. No, it has and that you have to put that thing old. in there. Yeah, like yeah, as yeah. far as like the. Yeah. You, you, champagne supernova, like all that stuff, and like and like the don't look back at those guitar parts. You can't that, separate it from the, the bam, greatness of the song. Bam, bam, yeah. bam, 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 it's not that it's hard to play; it's perfect. It's it's just perfect. It's perfect. Well, that was the Count Crow stuff for me. It wasn't hard to play. Some of it was kind of like bluesy I rock, but it was just whatever. <laughs> whatever. You just hate hate his whiny voice. I need to, I need to go back and listen to this stuff again. <laughs> I think if you did, it's just hard. Sean played it because Sean he's young. He plays that '90s yeah. trash like a lot of times. And that's my I love '90s stuff. I just <laughs> plays the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I know you're pretty that's much what yes. he loves. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. But give it away. Give it away. California. Like, all right. All right. Pause. Time out. <laughs> the new record's pretty good, actually. Yeah. For for you know for like a bunch of grown ups. Yeah. It's hard rock and roll. It was not a huge departure, which I think was, you know. Well, then Fashante like said recently that um, they saved some of the best stuff for the next record. Well, there so you hopefully, go. Hopefully, if there is a next hopefully record. Hopefully, they don't Because he's like, I might not make it. Right. Um, that's, that's some of ours. Just something to get your, your brain sort of stewing in a different direction. Like, go, go out there and like share some other ones like here in the comments below um, the, of some different cats that are playing some different ways and that it, you might not think it's of. Just, it's nice to hear things that are like not guitar hero things where they're like it's hidden or not even hidden but it's in these songs. Sometimes that's the coolest stuff. And that's the songs we're still listening to. There you go. That's it. Take us home. We've already talked we about said the things, clicking the and stuff. Like and subscribe and bell and just country road us home. I guess we can just go home now, right? Country roads. Take me oh. somewhere. Bye bye. Click like subscribe.